Hey everybody, in this episode, I interview Robert Jean Smith, the creator of Faster EFT and Utaptics. In this interview, we talk about the relationship between Faster EFT and Law of Attraction and why it works and sometimes doesn't work. We talk about how it affects our money, how sometimes we can be blocking it and what we can do about it, how we can attract more money. We talk about conditions in our body that we don't like and how bad memories in our past can perpetuate patterns in our life of things that we don't want and what we can do about it. I suggest listening a few times to this interview because Robert Jean Smith is one of the leading people in the world on how memories work in the brain and how to reprogram them and how to empower your life. All right, hope you enjoy it. What's the biggest obstacle to getting what we want? Limiting beliefs and expectations created by our past experiences. These limits create a subconscious attraction of what we don't want and block what we do want. But we can turn it all around with a powerful tapping tool called Faster EFT and leading edge law of attraction principles. In this podcast, life coach Mark Shahada explores both of these subjects with guests, as well as performs tapping demonstrations and sessions. Listen in and see for yourself how it all works. Welcome to the Tap It Out Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Tap It Out Podcast. This is Mark Shahada and I have a special guest today the creator of Faster EFT and Utaptics, Robert Jean Smith. Hello, Robert. Hey, hey, Mark, how you doing? Good to be with you. <laughs> really good to be with you. I'm excited to do this. Um, so we can get right into it. I can start asking questions and we can, we can um, see how this goes. Sounds okay? Yeah, sounds great. Okay. All right, so we'll start off with what is Faster EFT and what is Utaptics? All right, well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, Let's start out with um, basically how I got to Faster T and how I got to Utaptics, basically. Um, um, I started around 15 years old trying to solve the, the, the nightmares in my head. I started studying hypnosis, going to church. Uh, hypnosis was a very interesting program. And then moving up into the future, I got married. Um, and then my wife had some emotional, physical issues to address. I started at one time around 93, I started doing NLP, studying self-study, Anthony Robbins, Dr. Richard Bandler, and many others. And so that was, they gave me a foundation of, of thinking. And then in 99, I purchased the, uh, the EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. And from that point, I started doing is I started incorporating, mixing, and blending not only NLP, EFT, hypnosis, not only the touch and breathe, uh, Psych K, uh, Dr. Larry Neum's work, Dr. Roger Callahan's work, uh, psychotherapy, how the brain works, and creating a system that is was based on, originally started out based on energy, that's what the EFT model was, and moving into brain science, basically how the mechanics of the mind works. And so the EFT was uh, the cause of all problem block energy, uh, faster T that says it causes all problems starts at birth. And from the moment of birth, our brain starts to organize and structuralize how we hold and represent the world. And so, um, once we understand how the mind captures the world, it starts utilizing and producing from our own thinking. That means when you have experiences as a child, your brain records these experiences and then starts producing it. So faster T is an evolution of many processes, definitely of EFT, which is where I learned tapping. And then um, growing up into what we'd call the professional training system, which is your tactics, and, and that is a standardized system that each individual who's gone through the system has set protocols, understanding, and skill sets to help change not only themselves, but other people. So um, so if you were to say in a thumbnail, faster T, is is a, now we call it the self-help process. That means I will allow individuals to learn how to use this to work on their own stuff and clean up their stuff. And now your tactics is the training system. That means I create practitioners who are not only experts at how the mind works, but actually creating life changes in individuals. So that's the thumbnail, the overview, the short version. Okay, awesome. And so, you know, this podcast is, is about faster EFT tapping and leading edge law of attraction principles. Mm -hmm. And 
I always thought at the foundation of fast rate of key is law of attraction, but I'd love you to speak on that and, and how, you know, with fast rate of key, I've heard you say we, what we hold inside is what we get our yeah. world response to what we hold inside. And that's a very law of attraction type of approach. But what's your thoughts on how fast rate of key and law of attraction work hand in hand? Well, let's, let's just look at the logic of what is the law of attraction. As I said before, the faster T and your tactics mindset is, uh, today you have a problem, whatever the problem is, panic attacks, fears, phobias, won't make the phone call, won't lose weight, you, you're sick, you're ill. This is the law of attraction at its best. So with our mindset is looking at what it is that we're doing within ourselves to manifest. So the brain is actually using recorded information from birth all the way to present to manifest and create what we call the problem or the success, having abundance or no abundance. Both of these are the law of attraction working at its best. Now, the problem is, is that we're usually not so happy with not so pleasant law of attraction manifestations. And so one of the things that I do is I, I know how to change the negativity or the unpleasantries of the attraction that we're now manifesting and producing. And so what I do is I know how the mechanics of it works and go in and make, and make the adjustments. So, yeah, uh, well, I, that's, I think that's what we're all, you know, that's what we all want. We want just, we want to attract what we want instead of what we don't want. Right. right? Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, the, unfortunately, um, most people do not understand how it works. You know, they do not understand how their mind works. Uh, they don't know how to create. They don't know why they're, they're, they're in a problem. They don't know why their life is a mess. And they think, um, there's something wrong with me or there's something not working right or, you know, um, is, there's something broken. Right. And there's not. We just, we're successfully manifesting. So if you get the mindset that, that our minds is so powerful, so powerful that it creates illnesses, so powerful it creates loneliness and abandonment, rejection, no money, lots of money, great health, great sex, no sex, abandonment, whatever it is that we have, this amazing part of us is doing it for us. Yes. And how to step inside this system and make the adjustments is where the real power is. All right. Well, perfect. And that leads me to the next question. Um, we'll get a little scientific. Um, the, the idea that neurons that fire together are wired together, I think is huge in understanding like links and how we create them and break them. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit about this? Yeah, of course. The yeah. neurons are wired to fire, wire, wire, fire together, wire together is, is the premise of why we have what we have today. Now, the weird thing is, uh, things are wired together unknowingly, unconsciously, and then we're producing from this. And this is what our brain does. So, uh, to the simplicity of, of this is like, uh, Mark, you and I were, we're cavemen and we're, we're going to the water hole and we get a drink and they, we found this water. We love this water hole. It's such great sweet water. And we, we take swims and we have a good time. And, you know, we bring our friends and our girlfriends and our family there, picnics and all this stuff. So it's a great experience. And of course, while you're having this great experience, you're thinking of the water hole, you think about how good it is, and how much fun, you have what you call positive wiring. All right? Mm -hmm. And then one day, it's a bad day. You know, here we are, our friends, our family, we're all there, and um, something really bad happened. Whether a giant monster comes out of the water and chews up and kills our children, our wives, or, or some, some, some another tribe comes and tries to kill us and hurt some of our family, now all of a sudden, we have a new wiring inside of our brain. And when we think about the water hole, we don't have what you call a positive imprint. And, and this is how the brain works. Now, the cool thing is, is knowing how to rewire the negative wiring or to what we would call collapse the imprint that we're using to cause us harm or and to rewrite the story in our brain. So uh, a natural way that our brain updates itself because the truth is, whenever you recall any memory, a positive memory or a negative memory, uh, the emotional intensity involved with as you require, uh, draw it up or associate or think about it has a tendency to actually change the memory. That means, like, for example, when people are really depressed and they're feeling really bad, 
And then they go, why am I so depressed? Why do I feel so bad? Why does no one love me? Why can't I make any money? Why can't I have that? And they're feeling not what you call positive. And then they go back and they remember an experience that is negative. So now what the brain is also wiring more into this experience and compounding and creating what we'd call a bigger problem. And the weird thing is, is, you know, you've done it, Mark. I've done it. We visit our family and we talk about experience we all had. And when we talk about it, their story isn't the same as our story. It's totally different, yet it was the same experience because of how the brain is actually wired this information together. Okay, perfect. So let's say, so the water hole example. So let's say I'm a client and you're going to work on me and I have this fear of the water hole. Mm -hmm. So you'll take me back to that, that memory of me linking, you know, the monster jumping out and, and, and attacking me and that, that scary feeling that I had with maybe what I see with a water hole. And those two are linked, the emotion and, and the experience of the water hole are linked together. And so as a practitioner, you will tap on me. You will, you will. Well, yeah. what, I'll do, what I'll do, Mark, is right. first of all, you have to understand the model of memory. All right. When you think of memory, memory is an encoded data on the brain and the cortex and the cortex is, you know, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, motor. And so when you go back to this memory and as you remember the memory, the experience, what's going to happen is, is that you'll go into what we call an autonomic trance. You start to feel as if you're there. And so it is the mind, the body, the whole system operating together to manifest and to create a, a seemingly problem. Mm -hmm. uh, tapping is, is, is a simple process that we do address what you call the kinesthetic, the motor, the physical uh, autonomic system and ways to collapsing the memory. So, so the tapping is, is one of the skills we use. As you well know, Mark, we use a lot of different techniques. Uh, defractionation, which is basically a way of breaking the trance of the waterhole experience. Mm -hmm. So um, we do have them identify, associate, recognize how they do it, and then we will use, um, you know, we can use a tapping process or we can use other processes because the structure and how memories are updating itself naturally without us consciously knowing it. So remember, too, it's like the waterhole, like you and I were at the same waterhole. We have the exact same experience, but when I step into Mark's mind, his concern was uh, maybe his little girl, or maybe Mark's concern was be afraid of, you know, that everybody will think it's his fault. And yet uh, my concern would be, uh, could be something totally emotionally different. I may be looking at the animal or take, feeling guilty or anger, and yet it's the same experience, but neurologically written totally different in the minds of each individual. So the art of what we're doing is stepping into your mind, how you represent it, and using processes. Tapping is one of the good ones that we use to rewrite, re-encode the memory. So, yes, we use tapping. That's one of the best ones. But the most important thing about tapping is not the tapping itself, but is the structure of the mind and how to rewrite the story in the mind. All right. So my perception and how I record it is going to be different than your perception and how you record it. Of course. Okay. Your meaning is totally different. Your matter of fact, your filters from your world will filter out everything that I think is important. And I, mine may filter out what you think is important because we're coming from our own unconscious recordings and our own value systems. Right. So as a practitioner, you link into how I'm doing it in my mind, and yeah. how it's a problem for me. Yeah. And then can you talk about how to create new links to the, to that memory and how to create better feelings around that memory? Well, the, the, the most important thing is, is when I work with somebody, say, for example, here's, a, here's another good example. Um, uh, John or Jane or Bill or Susan comes to see me and they're, you know, their, their father had died or their mother had died. And of course, um, you who are listening to me, you'll think, well, I know what it is that they're going to dress. And we have a tendency to think we know what people feel and think. And so I talked about Jane. She, I said, well, what's, what's the problem? I mean, they died. What's the problem? Well, the problem wasn't has anything to do with the death of whoever it was that died. It had everything to do with the mother or the father-in-law and how they didn't like them and how they weren't even put on the eulogy. Ul I'm going to cut that out. They weren't even put on the list as a family member, and they weren't even invited to the funeral. Or right. they didn't get any inheritance, and everybody else did, and they didn't even like her. So the problem had nothing to do with the death of the individual, but everything but what how the family treated them. So, again, it all depends on – 
each individual. And of course, when we're dealing with death, uh, where's the problem? Well, the problem is, is what people hold in their mind, what they're saying to themselves, what they're doing within themselves to torture themselves. And shifting perception and shifting the internal values of what we hold about any situation. The law of attraction is attracting what we hold and believe to be true. And like a lot of people, you know, we may get in, you may ask the question, I'll just kind of lead into that. A lot of people, you know, trying to be positive, trying to be positive, trying to be positive, it doesn't work. And the reason if you've got a glass full of everything you don't want and it's full with everything you don't want, how can you put in something you do want when you're full of everything you don't want? It won't work. So that's where the big problem is, is that, uh, you know, you, I know you've seen The Secret, I'm sure many others, with the law of attraction, you know, watch the movie called The Secret. Well, the secret to the secret even isn't in the secret because the secret is saying put it in, and I say go in and change what's already in and then you'll get what's already in. And that's the biggest difference. So this is a, I think it's a good time to talk about affirmations. Mm -hmm. so now, why aren't affirmations working? And you're talking a little bit about that, but let's talk specifically about people repeating something to themselves, something positive. Mm -hmm. I will make $1,000 in three months or two months. And they, they think that repeating that over and over again might work. Why, won't, why doesn't it work sometimes? Well, the, the fact is, um, uh, what, there's there's four basic ways of affirmations. A lot of people don't realize that um, affirmations are not positive. Af affirmations are not negative only, but they're also positive and negative because an affirmation is anything you affirm, which means if you internally, inside your head, you say, I want to have a million dollars, I want to be a millionaire, I want this, I want that, and you say that, but on, inside you, there's what you call unconscious resistance. Uh, you can say it all day long, but when you say it and inside your head, after you say it, you go get your checkbook and you have a feeling, an emotion, a negative emotion about your checkbook, that's an affirmation too because affirmations are not just what you speak, but affirmations are what you feel. Feelings are an affirmation. So if you're feeling negative about asking for money or you feel negative when you when you think about a job or having money or the money or your wallet or your credit card, just the feeling is an affirmation, which can easily override a verbal affirmation. Right. And another affirmation is, is people will have bad movies, bad memories, bad experiences of money or people with money, having money or, or anything around money, just watching or seeing the imagery in your mind without saying a word is an affirmation. So so you can say one thing with your mouth, but your 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 kinesthetics, your visuals are negative or contrary to what you'd rather have. But you have also have to understand consciously, you know, we are actually trying if you're not working with your unconscious, which is the mechanics of the mind, such as the mind operates in basically five types of memory, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, taste and smell. Now if you are Operating within the brain's mechanics, which is, by the way, the, the unconscious is the law of attraction machine. It does bring to you and keeps you in alignment with its own internal system. Now, this internal system of attraction is built from what you watch from your parents. It's also your personal experiences. It's also your kinesthetics, your visuals and auditory. So your entire system says, screw you. You are not allowed to have money because if you have money, you know what's going to happen to your dad? His feelings are going to get hurt. Remember, if you have money or you have love or you have this and that, it's going to violate the whole family dynamics. And so you have to change the, the programming and different entities of the self, which entities is when I refer to your, your social settings, your parent settings, your personal experiences, your identity and the feelings and the, the fixes you get from whatever it is that you're wanting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so maybe there's conscious affirmations that you repeat to yourself, but then there's subconscious affirmations of what we hold inside mm -hmm. that are affirming whatever's there and attracting. Exactly. exactly. Right. And so faster EFT's approach to, like, let's say I want to make a million dollars is what? We're going to go to those, let's say, limiting beliefs or, or experiences about money that are limiting and we will either tap those down or so this change what, those? Yeah, that's what I do, Mark. Yeah. You want a million dollars. First of all, well, there's, there's several programs I use. First of all, 
why aren't you having a million dollars right now? What's the problem? Give me reasons why you don't have a million dollars. Give me all the proofs that say I'm not able, capable, smart enough, or have enough, not whatever it is that you do to manifest not having it. You know, because, you know, how many people I have come to see me and they say, you know, I want to quit smoking or I want, or I, I want to connect with people or I don't want to feel abandoned. I don't want to feel rejected or I want to be healthy. But everything inside their unconsciousness says doing everything, performing everything to make sure they keep in alignment with not having it. So right. one of the things we do is we inoculate, uh, eliminate, rewrite and transform the inner resistance to having it. You know, right. some people say they want to have money, but when it gets close to money or whatever it is they want, their unconscious says, I'm out of here. It's time to be sick. It's time to go play golf. It's time to sabotage this somehow with drinking, smoking, whatever you do. And so you have to make peace with yourself. So one of the things I will do, I'll have client come in and I don't just tap randomly. I get a sh unconscious structure, how you successfully manifest, hold and produce everything you don't want. Everything you don't want. I look for everything you don't want and all the reasons and resources. And once I take that and I flip it, now turn it over to have what you do want. Because what you don't want is producing what you currently have. You don't want to have what you call the emotional juice. It has the memory references. It has the auditory, the kind of stuff. it has everything. There. So I say do it the easy way. Inoculate the resources that keep producing what you don't want instead of what you'd rather have. Awesome. Okay. And so can we talk a little bit about, you know, people have – bodily conditions and they might, you know, they might blame it on, well, this is, you know, genetics or, or I just hurt my leg or, you know, my arms hurting, but it seems that with fast of tea, there's always maybe an emotional reason or something that we're doing to create these bodily functions. And then there's even worse. There's, there's all kinds of crazy bodily conditions that hearing you talk, talking about how, we're creating that from what we're holding inside. Can you talk a little bit about how our body responds to our mind? Yeah, I think it's very important to understand that uh, if you look at the body, the body is what I would say is the unconscious, honest expression of previous experiences. Um, you know, of course, you know, if, if you've been to my YouTube channel, which you have, uh, you, or if you've been to seminars too, seeing people who were severely physically ill I mean, like incurable, unresolvable issues that the medical community cannot even touch. And yeah, yet now they're, they're pain free and the blood test shows it's not there and their life represents the change. And that is because of how the mind works. And so um, knowing how to uh, recode our memories, and that is the neuroplasticity, memory reconsolidation, you know, neurons are fired together, wired together. There is what you call the structure, knowing how to go into that mindset of memory and actually re-encoding memory. And by the way, um, I mean, logically, you know, you can think about a really positive emotional experience, whether it's, you know, maybe when you were, you went to the doctor or went to the dentist and he gave you some kind of a drug, they injected you, and all of a sudden, as you remember, you can almost feel the sensations of it. Or you can remember a pleasant memory on the beach or with your girlfriend or your boyfriend and something really positive just by remembering it, you actually start to feel it. This is how the brain works. And uh, pain does have its own uh, hypnosis, its own recordings. And so knowing how to rewrite the brain and re-encode re the brain is really the key. Um, and of course, you know that what I teach is how to rewrite your story. And tapping is one of those. But, I've, you know, if I get a dollar for every time someone wrote me and said, Robert, I've been tapping all day. And I still are not getting changes. And, and, and I said, well, the problem is, is that you're not doing it right. It's not the tapping itself that makes the changes. It's the art of knowing how to adjust memory and how to change memory. And, of course, um, that's the key. I mean, there are people who use all kinds of therapies. I have people come see me. I'm very afraid. People come to see me with, with uh, you know, they, I'm not really cheap as far as session price. And, and I'll go and I'll change memories. But here's one of the things that I realize that when people have problems is that I do a session and they go home 
and they keep replaying the negative affirmations, such as feeling bad, the negative internal dialogue, what they're saying to themselves, how they're feeling within themselves, and they're looking for fault and finding fault. These are affirmations which can eventually overwrite, stop, prevent from any positive outcome because the unconscious resources are stronger and smarter than us consciously. Now, the saboteur within us is not the unconscious. The saboteur really is our consciousness not working with the smarter part, which is our unconscious. And if you don't know how it works, you won't be able to create the changes. You'll be trying to swap flies in the dark. It's very difficult. So, so let's say I'm your client. I come to you and I have this problem. And we, we, you go in and we change memories and we flip them. And then I go home and I practice the old stuff. I practice the negative thinking or the worrying or whatever. I, I practice my old programs. And I can, I can, quote, unquote, undo or maybe recreate some problems. And so that brings me to practicing more of what we do want. Can you talk a little bit about the happy journal and yeah. how? why is that important to do something like that every day? Right. Well, it's it's important to it's important to understand that you know the law of attraction or how our minds work. What you spend time with, you get more of. You know, so if you're practicing positive and you're manifesting, you're creating inside yourself, and you're actually uh, feeling it to be true, you feel the sensations of it, you're hearing it, you're seeing it, and you're there. You're telling your brain, your unconscious brain. This is what I want. This is where I want to go. It will start doing it naturally. It reminds me of a guy who came to see me. And uh, he's, uh, I'm in Oklahoma, and he's, he started this golf tournament, and it's uh, Friday. And, of course, you know, his problem is, is that he says, when I start anything, whether it's he was a sharpshooter, he was an a, a archer, and now he's a golfer. And so he says, and I said, you know, he's wanting to do really good in this tournament. All of his buddies are there. He wants to do really well. And he said, but every time, every sport, no matter what it is, I do great the first half and the last half goes, and I'm a big time loser. All right. So I said, have you ever had this experience before? And he was an archer. He was a sharpshooter. And his very first early experience was a baseball player as a young kid. And every sport, except for the baseball, um, it just went down bad. And so I started working on him, addressing the memories of everything going down. And his brain went to the childhood experience where he was being cocky, very proud of himself. He was a great pitcher. And his dad um, humiliated him, said, don't think too big for yourself. I'll knock you right off onto your, off your feet. Right then, boom, his unconscious mind captured this memory. And so when he got really good at archery, sharpshooting, and even the golf. His, that program that his brain captured from his father kicked in. Right. So I went and changed the memory of the early childhood. I went to all the our archery, and he won every one of them in his mind. The sharpshooter won, and he wrote me a testimonial. Um, uh, Sunday was the last day, and he said, Robert, I just it's, this is so amazing, he said. He says, I don't understand it. I'm on the 17th hole, and I'm four strokes behind. I don't know how that ball did it, but I won the tournament on the 18th hole. Right. And because the unconscious mind has this amazing ability to manifest and produce from the inner holdings. So if you have unpleasant memories, the brain, the unconscious mind, you have to understand the unconscious mind, I call it the intelligent idiot. And the reason why I say it's an intelligent idiot, it doesn't judge what's in there, bad or good. It just uses it uses it and keeps repeating over and over again until the day you die or until you rewrite the story. And that's what I'm doing for him. So this is the law of attraction. This is how the mind works. And when you understand how to operate within this thinking system, you can create anything in your life once you know how to rewrite your story in your mind. And if people understand this one simple idea, memories are like writings on the chalkboard. The writings aren't real, but if you act like they're real, you will live from a writing on the chalkboard. If you go change your memories, whatever you change it to, you'll operate from those too. Because people don't realize the past does not exist. It's over. It's gone. And the writings on your chalkboard or the memories in which you hold are just metaphoric ideas that will keep manifesting and producing until you change the writings. If you change the writings, your life will be different. 
My life represents that. I see lots of people's life who've changed the writings on their mind, changed the memories. Their life shifts and change in behaviors. We're, we're totally doing right. different. So we feel that memories are just so real. And, and, but what you're saying is that like, like a chalkboard, you can just erase, you can just easily erase and make new, create new writings. Maybe not easily, depending on what the memories are, but create new writings. They're, they're, they're more malleable than we think. Yeah. Well, see, the, the, let's, let's, the, the deal with memory, you have to understand the autonomic system, which is the kinesthetic, the feeler, the feeling that you go into the trance, you sweat, you think it's really happening. It's really true, but it's just a memory of dream you woke up from. Uh, the act of racing it, the physical kinesthetics of racing it and changing the sound of how you race it, the visual of racing the memories and changing or rewriting it is the dynamics of our mind. Memories aren't real. They're just programs that you picked up and written on the cells of your brain, and you can change those. Memory, I mean, science has proven this over and over again. We do it all the time in our work. This is just the power of your taptics, faster T, and neuroplasticity of the mind. Great. Okay, so we, we talked about how people can deal with their money issues. We talked about how people can deal with their bodily conditions, f physical problems. What else have you seen where Fast Fury of Tea can transform? How else can you transform yourself using Fast Fury of Tea? Well, I think the most powerful part about what we're doing is uh, we're giving people what you call emotional coping skills. Um, unfortunately, life is always changing, and the changes aren't what you requested. The deal is you've got to be able to adjust to those changes, and as you adjust to those changes, your life gets better. Um, I see people with physical ailments disappear. I see people with you know, their finances, their relationships, their love, their personal value, uh, getting the book written, doing things they never thought possible. So the quality of your life is really determined by the quality of the memories in which you hold and also the quality of the internal coping skills you have. So what we're giving people is what you call a greater value, a value of self personal power, a transformational tool that they'll use the rest of their life. And that means they'll overcome things they never thought possible. They'll get the jobs they never thought they could. They'll have the relationships that is way beyond their dreams. And it's all because of how you hold and represent things. And we just need to merely just change what we hold inside, make peace with ourselves, love ourselves, like ourselves. And how you love yourself and like yourself is changing the unpleasant memories, the memories that are pain, hurt, and Issues change those. You change your world changes. Your health changes. Everything changes with you. Okay, great. So if someone's listening to this and they want to find out more and learn more about how they can tap on their set on themselves, and if they want to learn more about faster EFT, where can they go? Uh, faster T adaptics um, faster T.com. I have uh, loads of memories. Uh, not memories. I have loads of um, videos on YouTube. Uh, uh, my skills of change .com is a, one of our websites. We're working on this one. This will be a new website. Um, you can Google Robert Gene, Robert Gene Smith, EFT, Faster T, your tactics, and you can find me. I'm, I'm all over the, all over the place. I travel around the world. I do seminars, um, all over the place, Australia, Europe, US. I'm actually here in Vegas getting ready to, um, heal your, heal your sexual self and heal your body creating more physical emotional shifts in people's lives. Okay, great. Okay, well, Robert, thank you so much for doing this. I'm, I'm so glad to talk to you about this. And I hope our listeners um, got some value out of it. I, I'm sure they did. So thank you so much for being with me. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on the Tap It Out podcast with Mark Shahada. We hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.